Hi, this is Mark Spurlock. I'm the executive pastor of Twin Lakes Church. And right now I'm up at Camp Hammer, which is our Christian Conference Center located right next door to Big Basin State Park. As you know, this entire area was hit so hard by the CZU Lightning Complex fire this past August. And I just wanted to show you more of the property. Many of you have been asking about what's going on at camp. Will we ever be able to rebuild? Well, I want to give you a sense of the issues that we are uh, dealing with and, and working our way through. And what you're going to see is some additional images here that really show the contrast between the devastation of the fire and the uh, forest starting to make a little bit of a recovery. But again, these types of things are measured probably in decades more than they are in years. But just if you were to drive into Camp Hammer and see the entrance, you would see our field and uh, a little lawn growing up all by itself. And some of the iconic figures like the old windmill and well that says Jesus the living water. And I think it's wonderful that the fire didn't touch that part of camp as well as a sign that welcomes people in. Uh, moving into camp, you know, you see examples of trees that were burned all the way up through the canopy on this particular red, redwood tree. Uh, those suckers, those sprouts that are growing out from the side, that's pretty much what this tree will look like uh, for the rest of its days. What I'm told by our arborist is that uh, it'll look kind of like a poodle tree. It won't have normal growth. It's really the last gasp of this tree living up to its name, Semper Virens Ever Living. Here's a picture of what used to be the site of Fur Cabin, the first cabin that would greet you on your way in. You can see the building site at the bottom part of this photo and then just um, nothing more in terms of the building. These are, this is an example of a building site that will need to be cleared of the building debris that remains. And you can see a lot of trees that were already taken uh, to make this area safe or to keep it clear of the pg e power line that runs across our property. This is inside of our maple cabin. This cabin is still standing, but it's for all intents and purposes condemned. And you can see how there's one bunk that is completely scorched. And then right next to it, you could still use that mattress on the bottom. Uh, albeit probably smell a lot like smoke. And so this cabin, like, like I said, while it stands, it, it's a, it's a teardown. Azalea cabin is the only cabin that stands like a time capsule now. If you were to walk into it, it looks exactly the same as it did the day before the fire. This is our main recreational field and the fire went around this area because it's surrounded by two creeks, the creek that comes down from the pond and Bloom's Creek on the other side. And so it wrapped around this area, uh, preserving these uh, recreational sheds and the trees that rim this area. And then the fire worked its way back into the camp property. If you're familiar with the layout, there's a lower road, everything above the lower road uh, was burned severely. And uh, yet, if you were to go inside one of those wreck shacks, again, it's like a time capsule. All of this recreational equipment uh, carefully and lovingly put away by our staff at the end of the previous summer. So what becomes of this stuff, we don't know yet, to be honest, because for instance, we've been told by our insurance company, they will not insure any future buildings for uh, or against fire. And so that obviously creates a real dilemma. This is a growing trend in California. There are more and more places in the state, in the mountains, in wooded areas that insurance companies are just across the board deeming uninsurable. And so we have our camp in one of those areas. In this image here, you're looking from what would have been the back of the kitchen through the dining hall to where there was a fireplace and chimney on the other side where people would come in and grab a cup of coffee in the morning and warm themselves by the fire. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with our staff, one of our pastors, Dan Baker, met his bride-to-be Gwenda right in front of that fireplace many years ago. So there's just so much history, so much memories uh, that, uh, are still part of this, this site, even though the buildings themselves have been taken away. This is the swimming pool. It looks like a pond right now. We don't have any power, so we can't drain it. And if we could, it would be subject to perhaps lifting when rain's coming. So we gotta deal with that. Right now we have a man in our church, in fact, who works at the county vector control coming up and helping to control the mosquitoes that would like to lay their young ones in there. 
Um, but uh, the pool house behind it, the snack shack are, are also completely destroyed. Again, uh, I talked about contrasts at the very beginning and you see this lush green lawn, some green trees uh, rimming it. And then in the background, uh, you can see the hillsides that really uh, the fire, there's very few places that the fire did not touch in the surrounding hillsides and in the upper part of our property. Again, life in the midst of destruction. Uh, some of our staff members, including Renee's own daughter, planted flowers in front of what used to be a staff home. And uh, the flowers still bear witness to that moment. But I would just mention, as we stop here at the staff home here, to remember our staff. We had 18 people living up here. All of their dwellings were destroyed. Uh, they have all since now needed to move on to, to other jobs as the future of camp remains somewhat uncertain, as it will be for uh, some time to come. Like I said in another report, uh, the first order of business for us is to have these building sites cleaned and cleared. We're hoping for state assistance. If that doesn't pan out, we'll uh, have a private contractor do that for us. We also need to remove close to 120 trees that have been condemned. These are trees that are close, not the only dead trees on our property. We have 100 acres, and so there are hundreds of trees that died. But the ones that are close to the center of camp that pose a risk to uh, people while we're doing working camp, those will need to be removed. We hope to do all of this by the end of this summer. Before we end, I just wanna show you a little bit of what camp used to look like. For many of you, you still have those images in your mind's eye. Here's Faye Malone, uh, one of our longtime staff members standing next to Josh and Lori Winans. Josh was also on our staff for many years. This is when they were picking up their son, Jacob, after a week of apostle camp. And if you come up on a Saturday morning at the end of a week of camp, you will see smiles abounding because lives have been touched in a profound way uh, through the ministry of camp and not just for other people this is my own wife laura with my son luke uh, my best friend's wife and widow sharon their two boys jacob and joe this was one of the first summers that these boys came to camp after phil died and camp had tremendous ministry and impact and uh, a place of healing and comfort for these boys uh, again that same saturday morning and then, um, what a beloved person in this picture. Many of you know, this is Gary Hazelton, who was not only the chairman of our board for many years, but he had a very deep and abiding love for Camp Hammer. And I'm happy to say a memorial bench that was put here in his memory, it survived. He's here with his wife, Jill, their, their grandson, Michael Spinelli, also uh, just kind of basking in the afterglow of another week at Camp Hammer. And so, for 55 years, the legacy of camp has been a place where God impacts people with the gospel, with the love of Jesus Christ in profound ways. And uh, that includes my own life to uh, an immeasurable degree. And so I, among others, would love nothing more than to see camp, uh, see a second act, but there's just a lot of things that we need to work through before we can say, yeah, it's, it's a go. So would you please be praying for us that God would give us wisdom and clear direction? And I hope that in the midst of the sadness and the grief, which I feel on a very deep level, you will also continue to look to the Lord for hope, for encouragement, because this is what I know from day one, 55 years ago, when this place was dedicated for the Lord's purposes until this moment right now, Camp Hammer has always been in the Lord's hands, hands that are capable, hands that are sure. And so we will rest in the fact that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all life, including whatever life he chooses to perpetuate here at Camp Hammer. Thanks for watching this update and uh, we hope to keep you posted as further developments emerge in the months to come. God bless.